So in God, please be careful. This is the devil sees you being in God as a serious deal. He does not like it. But it seems to me like we Christians are kind of taking our life in God lightly. We just lack the understanding of what we're getting ourselves into. You become careless and you become casual. Eventually, you're opening a door and they're going to come in. What's this? The Bible said, Jesus talked about a parable of how he goes into a man's house and wipe out all the demons in man's house and put the house in order. And Jesus said, if that house is not filled, seven other demons worse than the one that was cast out will come back and fill that house. So the condition of the man after will be worse off than the condition before. In God, fill your house with knowledge. Fill your house with understanding. You can't be ignorant in Him. Otherwise, seven other demons will come in and occupy the space that is not filled and you'll struggle and your kids will struggle. And the bondage and the addiction on you and your children will be so hard to break. Why? Because you were careless as a parent. The custodian of your own children, you were careless. You didn't take God seriously. You didn't come to church to be educated. You, you didn't care about knowledge insight and understanding it was more an emotional affair for you i want to come to church to feel good i get it we all feel good but god said i want to enlighten you so that you know what you're in the kingdom you the church the past present and future i have to say this please forgive me for talk, for saying this but like i said the program is out the window right now I feel to say this because many of us, if you're, not, if you're not made aware of the ambushes and, this, and the besieging, the things that he's laying up against you because the devil's mission of steal, kill and destroy does not change. And he wants to kill you, steal from you and destroy you. But you know what? With education, with wisdom, we are able to overcome unwit him on every turn and be able to run ahead of the enemy and outmaneuver him all the time. Does that make sense? Yes or no? So I say this because I have just made some proclamation and I'm afraid that you don't understand the pathway that has been cleared for you, that you continue to walk in ignorance and what we have cleared before you will come back. You can't do that. And I feel like God is saying, clear, clear the demons and all the negative and curses and everything that could have been on you in the next 50 years. We clear it today. We clear it. But you need, you need to live carefully from now on. You can't continue like Mr. Casual. Same old, same old you. Whatever is cleared, it will slowly come back. And the demons and the problems and the mountains that he will bring before you because he knows that things were once cleared and if you don't take responsibility, it's going to be hard for you to overcome those stuff in the future. Can I ask the mom and dad in here, please do this seriously for your children. The suffering that they're, that they're going through right now and I don't want to be mean by saying this, but if I could just be honest with you in a spirit, whatever's on our kids starts from mom and dad. You can't point your finger to the church and say, oh, it's the church I go to that my children are like this. No, 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 no. God gave the children to you, not to the church, to you first. And if you don't sort yourself out, your kids will reap the consequences of you not being able to deal with the stuff up here. Because whatever is on the head flows to the rest of the body, to the rest of the family. It's true also for me here as a leader of our church and the leader of our movement. Whatever it is that's on me will come to the church. And that's why I make it my responsibility to do the right thing. It's, is it easy to live right? Oh my gosh, it's the hardest thing to do. But I heard somebody in the weekend said, if you do the hard stuff, you, your life will be easy. But if you try to do life the easy way, your life will be hard. Living right is not easy. It's hard. But I'd rather do the hard stuff and live an easy life to take the easy way out and live a hard life. Does that make sense? Face whatever it is that you're going through with God. Face it. 
and deal with it now, parents, for the sake of the kids. Because whatever pattern you exemplify and exhibit today, your sons and daughters will carry on the same pattern. I saw mom and dad deal with the issues like this. I saw mom and dad deal with the issues like this. I saw them on their knees praying to God. I saw them holding hands when mountains were facing us. I saw mom and dad going to church. I saw mom and dad faithful to God. I saw mom and dad being faithful in the house of God. I saw mom and dad, it was hard at home, but they still put their tithe in. It was hard, but they still are faithful. It was hard, but they still went about it God's way. I saw it. And when the mountains comes my way, I'm going to just copy mom and dad. Because it seems like it worked for them because I'm still here. So what pattern, what pattern are we laying out for our kids? The Lord has set us free from a lot of things today. And you just have to be in the house of God for, that you, for you to feel that. But I just feel like the Lord is saying right now, David, they, they need to be informed. They need, we need to be educated in the ways of God, the things of God. So that going forward, we are living very deliberately and consciously, not randomly and not with the lack of knowledge and understanding. But we're now living life with the mind of God because we know I have to live this way not only for my sake and my wife, but also for my kids. That was the word God put in my heart today. And that's why I said, we're going to have to just forget about the program and let's talk as a family. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Let us make men, men and women in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. This is the original intention. Let them have dominion. Dominion simply means you rule over everything and anything. Question I want to ask you is, you are in God, right? Are you living in that dominion today or you've been ruled over by other stuff? That's why we need to know in Christ we have access to dominion. The original intention of God for his sons and daughters created in my image and likeness, by the way, when God said, let us make men in our image and likeness. I want you to know that you are absolutely beautiful and handsome. But you know, in God, I want you to understand God, because when you come to Christ, you enter into God, and you're so in Christ that God sees you through Christ. The lenses of God's perception and perspective of you is through Jesus. He is such holy and pure, and God says, I see you through my son. You are pure, and you are holy, just like Jesus. You are in Christ, and that's my perception of you. You are perfect, and I know many of you, but I don't feel like it. It's not about your feeling. It's about knowing the truth, and the truth will what? Set us free. It's about believing what God said about us, church. Uh, about us, his sons and daughters. He said, you're already perfect. Made you my image and likeness. He should not be Looking at yourself and hate what you see because you are hating me because I made you in me. So don't hate you because you're hating me. Don't be disgusted with you because you're disgusted with me. I made you my image. I'm, I'm a, you look like me. I'm a proud dad. I used to struggle with self-image. I tell you the truth. I used to struggle with that, you know, being in a culture where all they do is to tear you down the Say nasty things and that's just the way of the world. But I came to Jesus and Jesus said, David, you're not what they said you are. You are what I said you are. You are made in my image and likeness. You are so handsome. You're so pretty. <laughs> you, you are what I said. You are all of that in my, when you, when you come to me through Jesus, you are already everything that I have intended for you to be from day one. It's not about your feelings, it's about knowledge. Read the word and let the truth set you free. Yes or no? We are made in the image and the likeness of God. Church, church, pray for church Springfield. Why do we put ourselves down? Why do we tear down the image and the likeness of God? Why do we do that? By being nasty to ourselves and hating what we see in the mirror and even doing that to other people around us. Can I say this? If you don't like you, then you don't like anybody else around you. If you like you, then that spirit will come upon everybody else around you. A healthy person is a person that is really healthy with himself first. 
A person who loves himself. A person who accepts himself. A healthy person is a person who has a very half, half self-image of himself. That's a healthy person. It's not, it's not a, a person that is fit like you go out there and you do uh, uh, training and you're on a diet and you've got money and you've got a boat. You can have all the things of the world, but you're still corrupting on the inside. You know that. A healthy person is a person that is very, very healthy, have a very health, um, uh, healthy uh, self-image of himself. And then the things outside is added to you, like the money, the fitness, and all of that. But your healthiness, your well-being is based on you knowing that you're made in the image and the likeness of your dad. You don't have to be perfect to be perfect. Right? You're already perfect, just live it out. He made us in his image. And that's what I felt today like God is saying. They need the truth. Now watch this. This is a word for everyone. Don't look at the person next to you. This is just for you. I want you to know that God is so in love with you. He's so in love with you. He's so appreciative of you. He loves you. He's, you're, like, you're like a diamond in in. in on his finger. You're like a diadem, the Bible tells us, in his finger. You're like that sign ring on God's finger. You glow, you shine. It's like you are precious. You are fearfully and, and wonderfully made. God loves you so much. I tell you, it's to the point that if you see it, you would be very careful not to say anything about you that is contradictory to what you know about you from God. Amen. Don't self-harm yourself. Because self-harm is a sign that you don't like you. You know, this suicide stuff that people cut their wrists and cut their ears and cut their eyebrows and stuff. I don't know how you make your attempts, but... Right? Yeah. When you thinking of suicide, it's because you don't like you. And God is, ah! Why do you treat me like that? You know, you probably say, why do you treat me? Yeah. Do you know what? You touch yourself, you harm yourself. You're harming your dad. You harm his masterpiece. You're harming the master of that piece. And you're probably thinking, well, you know, give us a marching orders to go and win souls. How? <laughs> we, are, we have to go out and win souls, but we've got to really go out with a different image and perspective of ourselves, man. You've got to go out there loving you, loving God. And, and as you're so full of you, and so full of joy, so full of God, people would just be drawn to you but if you go out to tell people about Jesus and you've got issues with yourself they're like um <clears throat> you really sure you believe in what you're telling me I'd rather go to Amway because they're more enthusiastic about their product we still need to reach the lost we still need to be the light and soul but maybe God is saying I want to just touch my people first here they just want to align and mobilize us Let us make men in our image and our likeness according, and let them have what? Dominion. Say this with me. I have dominion. I have dominion. Shout it out loud. I have dominion. I have dominion. Shout it out loud. I have dominion. I have dominion. You know what that is? You have authority over everything negative that is coming against you. And you don't need to feel it. You got it in Christ. You exercise it and you see it come out. For example, like you're sick. Right, you're sick, right? You just have to get up and say, in the name of Jesus, go. You don't have to be so bold and so manly and so, you know, you just, if you're a woman, just, in the name of Jesus, go. And watch that go. <laughs> how do you know, how would you know the authority you have when you never step out to exercise that authority? You have things attacking your marriage rather than finding each other. You say, ah, oh, honey, Hold. Pause. Put a pause to it. How about if we just pray first and then fight after? Uh, you just make a deal. Can we pray first and fight after? Not fight first and pray after. Can we just pray first? What's this? You pray and the hate and the anger and the demon that is like feeling it will disappear. And then after you pray, you come back and say, okay, so where were we again? <laughs> Your wife will be like, I love you. I love you. It's over. It's over. Why? It was a spirit that stirs the water. 
And yet you have authority to kick him out, but rather than using it, you turn on your, and some of us men use the authority the wrong way. The Bible said the authority is to build up and not to tear down. Some of us men are using the authority the wrong way. We are tearing down our wives and kids. Shut up. Sit down. Make me dinner. The authority is to build up but not to tear down. Right? Why don't you use that dominion authority that God has given to you in Christ and stop every onslaught and invasion against you? Tina and I, we've got, we, you know what? We've got issues. We've got more issues than all of you combine, combined. And some of you like, Pastor, I've got to talk to you about my issue. And I've been counseling a lot of people in this church. Sometimes I said to myself, before I counsel you, can I just tell you about my problem? You probably sit there like, oh my gosh, I don't even know why I come to you with my problem. You've got global problems. <laughs> I said, well, would you like to listen to my problems? So people act like pastors don't have problems. We've got more problems than you. So next time you want to come see me for counseling, I want you to know my problem is global. Yours is just local, all right? Right? <laughs> and yet I still suppress it to see you. Why? I know the weapons of warfare available to us. I say, you get out of my life. I've got people to deal with. Bang, 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 bang. Use knowledge to deal with your stuff so that you can help other people. So if you want to come and see me about some counseling stuff, please bear in mind just that David's got global problem. I've got a household problem. Should I go or should I not? Yes, you can still come and see me, but I want you to know that you can take a stand in that authority in your own living room and say, Jesus, in your name, all of these things will not overcome. The Bible said, Jesus said, and you find this, don't go there, but you find this in Matthew 16. It says, I will build my what? Church, and that's people. You individually, us collectively. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against a church that Jesus is building. Did you know that the devil does not have to prevail over you if you allow Jesus to build you? Yes? He doesn't have to prevail over it. The reason why the enemy, the gates of hell, prevailing over you is you're not allowing the Lord to build you. Together, we can conquer the world, I tell you. Yes or no? This church here, together, we can, we can make a massive impact in Springfield. Yes or no? Yes or no? Together, we can change Brisbane. Yes or no? Together, we can make a splash in, in Australia. Yes or no? Together, we can change the Pacific. Yes or no? Together, we can change the world. Yes or no? I have people ringing me from Liberia, from India, and also from, uh, what's the other place? South Africa, which I've already confirmed. Free truth for me. I got to get out of the Pacific. And I confirmed that last week, I'm going to India, I'm going to Liberia, and I'm going to South Africa next week. The Lord said to me, it's time for you to get out of the Pacific Amen. next year. And I say this because the world is waiting for solution for the light. And here we are still crying over little things that you could have overcome if you just have knowledge. Amen. We're still crying like babies of, oh, they don't care. They didn't even say hello to me at church. What? She didn't make me a coffee. They made coffee for the pastor, but you know, what? Go and make your own coffee. There is problems out there. There are giants. There are Goliaths destroying cities and nations. And God said, get out of the Pacific. I say this to you to, for you to know, you have the authority to be able to squash your bears and your lions because Goliath is coming. And when Goliath comes, you can stand before him and say, I kill the bears, I kill the lions. And the very weapon and technology I use on the lions and bears called dominion and authority. I'm going to bring you down. I'm going to bring you down. And God wants you to exercise what he's given to you in private so that you can fight the battle in public. David was such a man because he was able to use the same weapons of warfare privately over lions and bears. Lions and bears speaks of your personal family issues and church issues. 
And some of us want Pastor David to focus on lions and bears. I want to face some giants, but you are not allowing me to go out and face the giants because you want me to look at your bears and your lions with you. What are we going to do? Can we just look at my lions, my bears? Okay, where are they? There. All right. They're growing. Are we just going to watch them grow or kill them? Are we going to just watch these little lions and bears grow or kill them? Oh, I don't know, Pastor David, but I just want you to know I have lion bear problems. 